Hill, it's my huge uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Philippe Graham, who is going to give a lecture called uh, Meteorological Architecture. Uh, Philippe and I have known each other for a while, and we've been intrigued uh, by the idea that um, architecture can be seen as sort of environmental, meteorological, or climatic. And if you think about it, historically, architecture has often been defined by its opposition to architecture. You think of an example like uh, the previous primitive hut or the modernist glass house. Uh, it's an idea that somehow architecture is, is opposed to, to climate and excludes it. There's another sort of tradition uh, that does sort of talk, talk about architecture in relationship to climatic sort of modification. Uh, and one of the maybe uh, most, kind of interesting, most interesting examples of that is, is actually air conditioning. <coughs> it's rather intriguing of the person who invented air conditioning did not call it that. He actually called it man-made weather, which is a much more interesting sort of term. But on the whole, I think our text has sort of treated climate uh, as something sort of to control, something in a rather prosaic way, and often you sort of the climate. When an internal climate is recognized, it sort of recognizes something that you want to sort of modulate and to have to be very, very sort of uniform. It's very much within the modernist tradition. And I actually think there's no other architect today, probably apart from Philippe, who really deals with climate as a sort of crucial material of architecture. Uh, and this is obviously a very interesting thing to discuss at any time, but I think it's a particularly important thing to discuss at the time when we have such uh, discussions about climate change and global warming. Uh, Philippe is very well known as a practitioner, he's very well known as an academic. He is a, a Jean Labatou professor uh, in Princeton, at Princeton at the moment. But also very excitingly, he's going to have the opportunity more and more for his work to actually be uh, constructive, creative. And one of the things he will show this evening, which is a really amazing and exciting project, is a uh, meteorological park in Taichung, in Taipei. And it's my huge pleasure to introduce Philippe Rahm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Jonathan, for the invitation here. Um, so, uh, I would like to introduce my, my work in a very pragmatic uh, way, because I think the idea to work on climate is not an, uh, an, is not an option just to, to choose if you want to work with a material or climate or, uh, uh, or color or so just a, a kind of sub subjective choice. I think it's more, for me, it's come from a more a stronger reality of today linked to the question of global warming and to the sustainability techniques. And, uh, of course, in the background, because uh, when we met, uh, when I was the first time in the, at the Bartlett, it was eight years ago, and we, we were interesting already in, in uh, invisible elements like uh, uh, physiological architecture, what's happened uh, uh, between the different invisible parameters of space, like, like light, air, and the relation to the body, like a physiological relation, like the hormonal reaction of the body, and all these things. And, and this subjective interest uh, at one moment in 2005 start to be in the same line than the new question about uh, global warming and new question about global warming. And uh, I think it's important because we, we some people, sometimes we think that we are in a kind of tradition of something, but I think it's something that are quite new because it's really linked with this question of uh, of, um, of new techniques linked with uh, sustainability. Uh, so, just first to, to, to say that uh, why we want to work on atmosphere, it's also linked to, to, the, to the idea that architecture is about, uh, is about space, it's not about really what you see, it's more about what uh, the void uh, between the wall or between the ceiling and the, and the and the, um, and the floor, it's a kind of, of uh, quality of uh, air, of light, and you are inside and you, you breathe this air, you, this space, and I think it's, uh, it's uh, the definition of this space is really uh, the matter uh, of uh, the architecture. And maybe before, we have no tools for designing the, the, the void itself, we, so we need to design 
the, the border of the space, the frame of the space, the wall or the, the sailing or the floor. But I think the, the, it's not really the, 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 the target of architecture. The target is, uh, is, it is the atmosphere itself because it's why we built a room, why we built architectures before to change the climate to create a kind of a new atmosphere where, where it's, when it's cold outside, it will be warm inside, or where it's too warm outside, it will be more fresh inside. So I think the, the, the climatic um, target of architecture is maybe the most important uh, 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 target for, for architecture. So if we want to design this uh, space, we have to uh, design the atmosphere, and of course it's linked to some, uh, um, to some parameter like heat, humidity, uh, moisture in the air, or pollution. <coughs> so first, uh, I just want to introduce this uh, data about uh, the global warming. So um, this is, this, uh, maybe you, you know already this kind of uh, graphics that show that the human activities produce uh, the green gas effect and produce this, uh, um, this um, increase of the temperature in the, in the world of one degree. So because this is in the, the, gr uh, the gray line is a computer uh, uh, line and the red is uh, what you, we could measure in the real world. And we could see when we introduce the human activities like uh, uh, to burn all the oil and uh, gas and all the fossil energy, we could see that we have exactly the same curve. So it's why we think that uh, uh, the, glo uh, the human activity burning uh, green gas uh, are uh, at the base of the global warming. So it means that if we want to change this situation, uh, we have to change completely the energy resource. Of course, we have to go into sustainable resource like a green uh, resource, like a wind, mile, or, uh, uh, or water, or uh, solar uh, energy. But we could not j jump to these new techniques immediately. We have to wait because the technique is not so... Uh, um, so good today, we have to maybe to, to wait uh, 10 years before or 20 years before going completely in the sustainable energy. So first we have to, because we use fossil energy or nuclear energy to, uh, as the energy, so we need first to reduce the consumption if we want to reduce the green gas effect. So this is, in Switzerland, they call this, uh, this 2,000 watt for one person for one year. So it means that if everybody used 2,000 watt for one year everywhere in the world, it could be a sustainable world. So it means that we have to decrease the amount of energy that we use. And so in some other countries, they could increase and we could arrive to this line of uh, 2,000. So if we want to do this, of course, we know that the... Uh, that the, um, uh, the building uh, with a uh, heating system and with the uh, production of hot water is, uh, uh, or air conditioning is, uh, one, is, 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 um, is the cause of 50% of the green gas uh, that are produced by human activity. So first we have to reduce it. Uh, so this is a consumption of energy today. And we, if we want to to come back to this line, so we have to reduce by a factor of eight the consumption of energy in the building. So there is some, sim of course, there is a lot of uh, different uh, uh, aspects. Uh, there is some urban aspect. There is maybe some uh, world, uh, world um, um, uh, layer. Uh, there is some, uh, um, some urban um, uh, layer, and there is some architecture. Uh, layer and uh, and at this uh, at this scale at the architecture scale uh, there is some simple there, there is these four points that are the most uh, uh, common uh, idea to reduce the energy in the building so first we have to get a very big insulation and because we have a big a very big insulation and also airproof layer we need to to change the air inside. So the, there, there is this double flow uh, ventilation. Maybe you know uh, these things that are with heat recuperation. And after, there is some other uh, things. And when you look to this, uh, so it just this is show, so th this is this, this big insulation. There is this double flow system to renew the air. And, uh, and there is, uh, this is this, 
uh, this new system. And so if we use this kind of things, we could see that this is uh, old, um, the old um, building. So it was uh, used, uh, 600 megajoules for one square meter. And today, if we apply this kind of uh, new uh, um, uh, things, we could reduce by a factor of six. And we, so we decrease the quantity of energy. And of course, we have um, less um, loss of energy uh, with a big insulated uh, uh, wall. So if we analyze uh, again this, uh, this uh, recommendation, we could see that the, the term, the vocabulary of this, uh, voc uh, of this uh, sentence is linked. You, you could see insulation, uh, ventilation, flux, heat, so eating, so it's more, it's not really about uh, a sick, uh, sick uh, solid uh, object. It's more about uh, uh, eat, about uh, climatic uh, parameter. It's uh, insulation, flux, ventilation. It's all about uh, uh, invisible parameter. So maybe we could say that today, if we want to fight the global warming, if we want to, to be into this uh, goal to um, to, to fight for the, uh, for the climate, maybe uh, we, could, we see that it's also linked to the climate uh, aspect of the building. It's not only, the climate is not only the goal, it's maybe, it's become maybe the tools for the architecture because it's not really about, uh, about the solid element of the building, but it's more about the, the void uh, aspect of the building. Uh, so maybe we could change a little the vocabulary of, uh, of, the, of the architecture, the language of architecture, and say that maybe heat or air, vapor, light could become the new bricks or the new concrete or the new steel of architecture. Maybe we could directly design with this kind of element uh, rather than uh, to, to design with a, uh, with a solid element. So... Um, So when we first start to, to think about uh, this, we, we come back to uh, an, old, uh, an old way to think about architecture, like in the 19th century, when there is a, a big book about uh, composition and uh, about uh, the element of architecture, the language of architecture. And uh, so we, we start to think that we could uh, apply this idea of typology uh, of uh, um, element of architecture, like in the 19th century uh, book of, uh, of um, uh, Guardet or, uh, or Durand or some old uh, uh, theoretical uh, approach of architecture. But we want to change the language, to change from the visible to the invisible. So this is a little the idea to change from the metric composition to a more thermal composition, from the tectonic, from the solid to the meteorological from the visible to the invisible, to, from the solid to the void. And, uh, and, and the idea it is to start to design the void itself. So, um, so this is a kind of new encyclopedia or new dictionary of element of architecture. And if you remember the old uh, dictionary of architecture, it was, uh, it was organized in two ways. First, there is the element of uh, architecture. It was like a door, a, a colon, a wall, a stair. Uh, so it was uh, a, a wall. So it was element of architecture. And after there is some uh, element of composition. So it was like a symmetry or asymmetry or composition or addition of room or subtraction or inclusion. So you have a room inside another room or uh, multiplication of colon or so it was like uh, like an element of composition. And so we decide to to change also this uh, uh, this dictionary into. Uh, to say that the element of architecture will be no more uh, the colon or the stair, but it will be the light or the vapor or the heat. And the element of uh, composition will be no more the symmetry or the asymmetry or the inclusion or the addition, but it will be more the, um, uh, the it will be like um, element that create a movement of, uh, of this, uh, of the heat or, or of the vapor. It will be like, 
like physical um, phenomena like conduction, convection, uh, evaporation, or diffusion, or radiation, all these uh, uh, meteorological phenomena that uh, are linked to, to this kind of invisible parameter. So, um, so first, uh, I would like to, today, just to introduce two uh, parameters. The first will be the heat, uh, heat language. Heat design and the second will be the moisture or the vapor or we start with the vapor to design the space or, or we start with heat to design the space and of course after we, st we start to combine together the heat and the vapor design and, uh, and at the end I will show the park, the Taishung uh, uh, getaway park we have won the last year and we are working now and because it's an addition of, uh, this, of three layers that are working together, not on the same uh, scale, but uh, together. And uh, um, so it will be the, it, it's a kind of um, composition of, this, uh, of three different elements. Um, so first, uh, just in, in the way to think about, uh, to, in, in my office, we we work in a kind of uh, linear process. First, we have some intuition of something, or we understand that something become interesting, and we don't know exactly what it could be. So it was a little the idea when we were invited by uh, Aaron Betsky for the 2008 Architecture Venice Biennale, and we we um, we work on the on an idea to work with convection, uh, with heat, as an element of architecture like a, a brick. And uh, we start from two, uh, two reality, two, uh, two, two approach. The first was a Swiss recommendation. So it's not my recommendation. It's a kind of uh, official recommendation. So there is some recommendation like this for a, a public bu building, but there is al uh, also some recommendation for private building. And to reduce, as I showed before, to reduce the consumption of energy inside the building, it's better to warm the corridor only at 15 degrees rather than 22 degrees Celsius, because you economize from uh, if you warm it at uh, 15 uh, degrees Celsius and not at 22, you economize uh, 7 degrees Celsius uh, during the year, so it will be a, a big economy uh, a big, uh, at the end. So, um, so they propose different temperature in the room, like 15 uh, in the corridor, 16 in the, in the bedroom, or. Uh, 18 in the kitchen, so it's linked to, um, it's linked if you are moving or if you are uh, new, naked or not, if you have a, uh, for example, in a 16 in the corridor, it's good, because 15 is good because you just walk a few seconds in the corridor, you don't have time to become cold, so it could be 15, but if you warm the living room at uh, 18, maybe after 10 minutes you become cold, so it's better to have uh, 20. So it's, it's, it's uh, some new recommendation. But if you think as an architect, if you think about this recommendation, uh, you could no more have an uh, open plan like Le Corbusier or Miss Van der Rohe or loft uh, space because you need to close the door between room. So because if you let the door between the corridor at 15 degrees Celsius and the bathroom at 22 degrees Celsius open, uh, everything will mix like uh, warm water and cold water and so it will be at the end 18 degrees everywhere. So it means you, have to, you become cold in the bathroom so you have to turn more the radiator in the bathroom so at the end everywhere it will be 22. So, uh, so it's a very uh, difficult position because it means that you have to come back to the 19th century with a room, with door, with corridor, with a separate room. You could no more use uh, Miss Van der Rohe open plan. Or, so it's a, a problematic uh, for an architect because it means that it's, it's a kind of regression or, or it's a kind of um, to come back uh, into the 19th century old uh, architecture. So this is uh, the first point. The second point is uh, is a physical uh, point, it's a law of Archimedes. It's just that the warm air go up and the cold air go down. And, uh, and very often, if you measure the temperature under the ceiling, it could be very warm, it could be uh, uh, 30 degrees, and down uh, at the floor level, it could be 15 degrees Celsius. So it means that where it's red, it's warm, and where it's blue, it's cold. And, uh, 
and but it's a it's a, it's a it's a loss loss of energy because nobody live under the ceiling. So for example, here there is no there is a big quantity of air uh, that is warm, but with nobody inside. So it means that it's uh, energy with, that we lose by warming this area there, and. Uh, but and here you could see that the red is up and the blue is down. And what we want in reality, it is to reverse this position, to have more, uh, to have more warm down, and uh, it could be cold uh, upper because um, this is a, a kind of ideal or ecological line. So it means that at the foot level, it will, could be 24 <coughs> degrees Celsius, and. Um, at the, um, uh, where, where there is a body, it's 20. And after the head, upper the end, uh, beyond, there is nothing, uh, nobody are there. So it could be uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius. If, if we could reduce the energy there, it could be a very uh, good uh, economy of, uh, of energy. But it, so this is a, a kind of ideal um, idealistic curve, but the reality, the natural uh, curve, is completely the opposite because uh, this is a physical uh, curve. This is completely the opposite. So it means that the 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 natural curve is completely unecological, if we want, it's, uh, because we lose a lot of energy there. So what we propose it is to uh, for the for the Biennale, it, it was to build this kind of. Uh, of, um, of um, reverse position because normally <coughs> it's uh, warm there and cold here and we want to distort to change it and to create a space where it will be more warm down and more cold uh, uh, at the top so it's a kind of reverse uh, thermodynamic system so it's it's, uh, it's it's to create an imbalance of heat uh, by by warming more down and, and less uh, at the top. So it's a little like the phenomena of the Gulf Stream because it's le, le, the same with the salt water and with the normal natural water because the salt water is more heavy than the, the natural water. So it's why the Gulf Stream, the water from the Mexico Gulf go uh, to the North Pole and the, and, the, and the natural water from the North Pole go up. And so it creates this kind of stream. And so we propose to build this stream because we, uh, by, uh, by saying that we need more heat at the foot level and less air. So it's exactly what we are doing. It's more warm air and more cold air. And so we, we modelize with uh, the computer the, the, um, the, the space itself. So it's a, it, it, this is a section. So we introduced two radiators, one uh, a warm radiator at 26 degrees Celsius and another at 15 degrees Celsius. And so it generates this stream in the space. And, um, and it also generates some line and some curve and also some space. So here it will be uh, 24, here it will be 22 degrees Celsius, here it will be 18. So it uh, creates some uh, different space at different temperature. So uh, for the Biennale, it was just the idea to start to, to design space only with, uh, with heat, with convection, with uh, temperature, not really with a visible or with a solid element, but more with um, invisible element. So the quality of the space was not really visible, but it was more into the invisible. So of course, if you take a, a, sh um, a photo shot with a with a thermal camera, you could see this uh, different uh, quality of, uh, of heat inside the space. So for the Biennale, it's, uh, in 2008, it was really a kind of uh, idea to explore a new uh, way to designing space without using really the wall or the partition, or, but more by using the the distribution uh, according to the physical law of Archimedes of the, of the heat inside the space. And uh, so it was really abstract, like these two, uh, um, two, two, um, uh, two panels uh, uh, inside the space. And 
so here it means that here it was warm and here it is cold. And so it was like, uh, I don't know, but it was a little like creating a kind of uh, um, um, a kind of summer here and a kind of winter here or a kind of uh, bathroom here and a kind of corridor here or a kind of uh, uh, to, to stretch the space between these two, uh, this cold area and this warm area. So it was really abstract when we show this project at the, at the Biennale. And so it was maybe the first time that we use this term of uh, meteorological architecture to say that it's uh, design, designing the climate, designing the atmosphere itself. And, uh, and also there is something that comes from, but it may be, uh, but this is also the idea that the function could uh, follow the, um, uh, the climate. So it means that maybe the, the, if you have a certain kind of climate, there is some action or some function that could grow. And in, in the history of architecture, the idea is that, the, that you, you design first the function and after you introduce the technique for the climate is something new. It's come from the 20th century, from the invention of the radiator. But before, it was not really like this. It was more uh, you, you first introduce the fire or the, the, the uh, fire space, and after it cr create different gradation of uh, heat, and uh, the function was accorded to this uh, different uh, temperature linked to the distance of the fireplace. So, uh, uh, but I will show also something about this uh, with the humidity. So, uh, following this project, uh, the French artist Dominique Gonzalez first asked us to design a project for a studio and a an house for her. And, and so we take exactly the same, uh, uh, the same methodology. So we, this is a section we introduce. This is 12 meter by 6 meter. Uh, so we introduce the uh, two radiator in the space, uh, one warm and one cold. But it was not really cold. It was we, we follow the Swiss recommendation. We say, okay, a uh, house today, uh, following the Swiss recommendation, is stretched between 22, this is a bathroom, and 15 or 16, the, the corridor or the bedroom. So we could say that maybe before, uh, during the 20th century, a uh, house was stretched between public space and private space, or between night space and day space, but maybe today, the most fundamental reason for designing a house is more uh, to be between 15 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius. So it could be a new logic to design um, a, a domestic uh, space. So we introduce these two radiators, one at 22, one at 15 degrees Celsius, and then it creates some different space at different temperatures. So here it's 20 or 19 or 16 here or 17 here. And so following the temperature, uh, we introduce the furniture. So where it's 22, the bathtub uh, go. Where it's 20, there is a sofa. Where it's 19, this is a kitchen. Where it's 16, there is a bed. So it's, uh, first we design the, the temperature uh, map. And after, we introduce the function. And, uh, and so it means the bathroom is here. The living room will be here. The kitchen will be here. And of course, we need to connect this uh, furniture together. Uh, so we introduce some floor. And the floor have to be, um, have to be open. It's a small uh, beam of uh, wood uh, with hole in between that let the air moving everywhere because the, the air, the stream of air must move everywhere in the house. And so at the end, we arrive to this uh, image uh, so you could see that there is some space in between the, the, um, the, um, the wood beam and uh, because the air could move everywhere and you could see that the bathroom will be here and the living room will be here and the bedroom here, the kitchen is here. And maybe if you remember when I start, I say that in the 21st century, if we want to follow the ecological recommendation, uh, the Swiss recommendation, it means that we have to come back to the 19th century and to create closed room with door. We, we could see here that we keep open door. We could, we could, keep, uh, we could build 
uh, a space like the 20th century space, uh, open space, uh, but uh, without uh, loss of energy because here, uh, here it will stay everywhere at 22 here and here it will be everywhere. So you don't need to close, you don't need to, uh, to have partition to separate the different rooms. So it's a kind, this project for me is a kind of, uh, of um, um, uh, it's a kind of, uh, yes, to, to keep the, um, what, we, what we want, and what we get from the 20th century, this open plan and uh, open space, but to adapt it to the 21 century uh, exigence uh, for recommendation about uh, sustainability and it. Um, so, uh, one year after, we were invited at the Louisiana Museum in Denmark. And so, we follow the same uh, strategy of design. And, uh, but here, it was more, uh, we don't work with a kind of uh, convective movement. It was more uh, just, uh, the, just the, the Archimedes phenomena, the warm air go up and the cold air go down. And we start to, to adapt the, the space, the furniture, and the space uh, according to the climate. Uh, so this is, a, this is a plan, and this is a section. So uh, th we, we introduce a kind of, it was, it was, there is also something else about light, but I don't want to to go in this uh, topic now, but, so, but it was two sources of light, of different lights that produce different kind of energy. Uh, this is uh, the, the old uh, bubble of light. This is a new uh, uh, bubble, fluo uh, bubble. So it was two sources of light, and this source produced a lot of heat. And so where it's more warm, we introduced the bathtub and the sofa and the bed, and everything was according uh, to the different uh, to the different um, uh, layer of uh, heat inside the space. So the here the idea is no more to work on the plan and the section, but m more to work on the space like a global atmosphere and to and to uh, design it uh, um, like uh, one one space. So the, and the goal, of course, is a kind of reduction of. Uh, of, uh, of energy because if we have the bathtub there, it's mean so it could be 22, so you could be naked there and you go down in a more uh, colder area. So it's a, o also an idea to optimize the energy inside the, inside the space. And uh, we just we have just finished uh, an apartment in France for a young doctor, and so it was the same uh, idea. So this is a stratification of the heat inside the inside the volume of the apartment, and uh, so it means that the bed will be down, the sofa with a few people is here, the canap the the, the fauteuil for one person is more higher and the shower is more higher. So everything starts to find a, 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 his own position inside the heat uh, according to the, to the um, if we are naked or not, or if you are uh, um, a, f a few people or not. So it's the, it designs the position of the, of the different object. And also there is something about the moisture from the most dry area to a most uh, humid area. But I will show this. And this is some... Uh, And this is some image of, uh, of this object. So the sofa start to, to fly, and uh, and the different all the uh, the different um, uh, part of the of the room start to be at different uh, high in the in the space.
And maybe something is important that we, uh, when we work on the idea of to, to design the climate, of course we don't know exactly what will be the function, or maybe we, we design the, the climate according to uh, certain uh, uh, activities and certain uh, if, you have uh, if you have clauses or not, but I like the idea that the function could come uh, after and maybe some unknown function could also appear. So I think it's, uh, um, uh, I will explain it also for the park because it's, it's a kind of second process in the, in the work that when you design climate, form and function fo could follow the, the cli climate. Here, this is another project uh, based on the convection. So it was a competition in Hambourg. We won this competition, but um, in the 2010, and so here it's only the slab that uh, that change the position according to the temperature. So it go down in a more colder area and, and go high, uh, more high in the more warm area. And. And so this is the image of, of, the, of the building with these different slabs that go down in the, in, the, in the cold area and go high. Another project for a museum uh, in 2008. Um, it was in, in Poland. And so it was the same strategy. We say that uh, a, a museum is stretched between the storage and between the, maybe the office uh, space. And in between, there is an exhibition space. And you could say that uh, storage could be at 16 or 15 degrees Celsius, and the uh, and the working space at 22 when you stay a long time uh, without moving in the space, and and so it means that we start to to design this space, uh, the section and everything according to this uh, difference of temperature. So the plan at each, every level change. Because here, for example, the warm area is small, and so it means that there is a very big storage at the low level. And uh, in between, the green area will be more the exhibition space where the people could, the visitor could go. And this is, it become more important here, so the warm become, so it means the storage become a little bigger and the exhibition space are in between. And so here it's become bigger, the storage is bigger, is smaller. And so it means that it changed at every level. And, uh, and also the exhibition space change, the shape change uh, according to the, to the temperature. And so it, at the end, at the top of the building, is, there is a very small storage and very big uh, space uh, for at 22 degrees Celsius or 21. And this is some image of, um, of this space. And you could see that, of course, also we need to keep the, the air have to go everywhere in the space to, uh, to, for distributing this, uh, the heat everywhere in the building. And uh, here you could see the plan that change at every level according to the temperature. So the, the, the room, when we have more space for the exhibition or more for the storage, so everything change. Uh, at all the different uh, uh, level. And here it's another uh, small project um, also about this uh, um, possibility to, uh, to open um, um, uh, space. Um, uh, and and the, uh, the function of the space, it was, it was a kind of uh, a project for a pavilion that could be a model for an uh, art school in, uh, in France. And uh, so, um, so the, the, the idea was to say that we don't know exactly what we need for uh, an art school. Because, for example, for the light, 
the light is uh, in the history of art. You could find different quality of light according to different technique of uh, painting. Or uh, so, for example, you the you have the north uh, light for the painter, or you could have a dark space for the people that work on the on computer, or you could have very bright light for a sculptor. Uh, so we don't know exactly what kind of uh, of uh, the atelier, what kind of light it need. And so what we propose is to to have different uh, light, so there is a very bright light, there is a little more dark light and more dark and very dark light. And, uh, and for the temperature, it is a little the same. For example, if you, are, uh, if, you are, if you are a watchmaker, like in Switzerland, you need very, uh, very warm because you don't move and you are very concentrated and so they warm very uh, at 22 degrees Celsius this space, but if you are an old uh, sculptor, like a, a marble sculptor, so you, you, cre you, you create your own energy, so you could warm the space only at 14 degrees Celsius. So, uh, so you, we don't need know exactly what kind of uh, temperature will be the best for an atelier. So we propose to have, uh, to, in the section, to have different um, uh, high. So here it's warm and a little colder. And uh, so it means that in every, uh, ring of uh, space of rooms. So here it will be cold, uh, cold and uh, uh, cold and very bright. And here it will be warm and very bright. And here it will be uh, cold and very dark. And here it will be warm and very dark. So you have different possibility of room, and you could choose according to your own practice. <coughs> you could choose where you want to be. Uh, if you have no inspiration, you could just stay in one room and wait for something. But this is the idea that the, the, um, the, there is just a variety of different rooms with different quality and you could decide where you want to be. Okay, now I would like to introduce a uh, second element, the humidity design. Uh, so, the, uh, bef be all the, the other project, the previous project was based on the heat, and here we start to, to work on the humidity, and all the humidity could, uh, could be the driving force for the design of the building. And, uh, and this is a, this uh, system that is used in this uh, in this uh, ecological uh, um, technique. So it's uh, this dual flow system. So the cold air, if it is a winter situation, you have the cold air that come out from outside and go inside the room, and after it go uh, in the space, and and when it go out, the, the exhaust air will go back in the same uh, space and it will warm with, because there, there is a different uh, um, a plate of uh, metallic plates that, so there is an exchange between the air that come and the heat that go out. And the reason why we need to change the air, uh, there is two uh, primary reasons. The first is because we, when we breathe, we lose a lot of water and uh, we, we add a lot of moisture inside the air and if we don't change the air after one moment, uh, the saturation um, uh, curve is uh, rich, and it means that there is some condensation. So it's uh, the the most important reason is because we breathe and we uh, we produce a lot of um, vapor inside the air. The second reason is to change the oxygen and to uh, uh, to bring some new fresh oxygen and to get out the CO2, and also after there is a, also the question of smell and things like this, but the most important reason is first the humidity. And so if we, you don't change, it creates problem inside the building, and of course the question of how, how much quantity of air you will change will be linked to the energy, because if you change, if someone uh, breathes six liters of air during one minute, or during, uh, I don't know exactly, uh, six liters of air during uh, one minute, 
Um, so it means that, uh, e and if you change, if you open the window, or if you change uh, uh, 60 liter of air, so you lose a lot of energy because you warm, you need, if it is zero degree outside and you want 20 degree inside, you need to warm uh, from uh, zero degree to 20, 60 liter uh, instead of, uh, of six liter because you, use, you need only six liter. So it's a lack, it's a loss of energy. So this is the reason why we want to, to um, introduce only the quantity of air we need according to the people inside and according also to the function of the people inside. So here we could see that if you are sleeping, you produce only 40 gram of vapor uh, during one hour. If you are in a normal position, you produce 150 grams in one hour. If you use the kitchen, you cook and you, you have the water of the cooking uh, that you produce uh, 500 grams in 20 minutes. And if you take a shower, you produce 800 grams in 20 minutes. So it means that there is a very, uh, a lot of difference of, produce, of produce, production of uh, vapor inside the space. And so when you introduce in this double flow system, you have to introduce the new air somewhere and it goes somewhere else. So when you in will introduce the new air, you will introduce it in the most dry area. And after, so it means it will be the bedroom because as I, I show here, you produce not a lot of vapor. So it will be the most dry area and after it goes to the living room and after it goes to the kitchen at the end. So it's a kind of internal wind, uh, indoor wind that travel inside the space. And of course, uh, you could understand that if you introduce the new air, the fresh air in the bathroom, so you have all the moisture of the shower that will come back in the bedroom and so it's not so good. If you introduce in the toilet, you have the smell of the toilet that will come back in the living room, so it's not a good idea. So of course, the, the, the good way is from the dry area to the, to the, um, uh, to the wet area in the space. So, uh, so this is, it could be a new reason for designing architecture. We say maybe this uh, new typology is something new because normally you don't, uh, the, normally the bathroom is near the bedroom, is not separated by the living room. So this is, this is a kind of invention of a new typology uh, uh, of the domestic uh, space. So we just follow this uh, new typology and we propose, this is an apartment, this is a plan of an, an apartment where we introduce, we plan the, the movement of the air according to the moisture inside the space. So the fresh air arrive here and after it move inside the space and the exhaust, the humid air go out there. So this is the travel of the air and it creates a kind of uh, geographical map inside the space between a kind of desertic area in the apartment and a kind of tropical humid area in the... And following this new map of, uh, of uh, humidity, we introduce uh, the, the function, so the bedroom will be there and the living room is here, the kitchen is here, and the bathroom is here, the bathtub is here. So there is a kind of, of gradation of the design of the space. And, and this, is, um, this is one image of, uh, of the building. So it, there is also something with, uh, because uh, the humid air is more light than the dry air. So it's also it create a kind of partition in the section. Uh, it's why often you could see that in the toilet you have the exhaust uh, um, um, uh, plug of uh, air that is at the top uh, under the ceiling because it's, uh, it's um, there, it's there that you, you will get the humid air and the dry air will be more uh, low. And just to, uh, to finish with this idea of humidity, I think it's an interesting topic um, because uh, um, it could be also something linked to the crisis of the modernity according to Gaston Bachelard, uh, Poetic of Space, because when uh, Poetic of Space, uh, was this book of Gaston Bachelard from 1958, is a kind of first uh, critique of the modernity, like a, a psychoanalytic uh, critique. And, um, 
And it may be uh, at the same time uh, before Aldo Rossi and uh, Jane Jacobs. So it is, is the same period of uh, uh, this uh, critique of the modernity and the starting moment of the postmodernity. And when he writes um, uh, this critique of the modernity, he, he says that the house, the old house, was stretched in the vertical way uh, between the attic and the cellar. And he says that it was a kind of uh, um, a symbolic way to think about uh, the human mind, uh, the human between the uh, clever and intelligent part area and the uh, crime and the uh, dark uh, side of the body of the human mind. So it was this idea to stretch the, uh, the, um, the, the, the house between these two um, Paul, uh, uh, this is the idea of inside the poetic of space. And he was, and he, what he says that the old house was stretched in a vertical, was organized in a vertical way, uh, in a vertical composition, and he, he is against the modern apartment that is horizontal. He says that in the modern apartment, in the modern flat, you have no more uh, verticality, so you have no more cellar, no more attic, and he, he, he writes that uh, the people with lose the, their mind because they lose, uh, they have lost the attic and the tailor. So it was a, a, a kind of uh, attack against uh, the disparition of the symbolic of the house uh, stretched between the, the, in a vertical way from the attic and the cellar. And so if you analyze, of course, uh, uh, what, what, if you trans, uh, tr change his world into a more uh, architectural uh, approach, you understand that the vertical organization is linked to humidity and coldness on the bottom and uh, warm and dry space on the, on the attic. And of course, follow, following this, uh, this uh, difference of uh, temperature and humidity, you have different use of, uh, of the space at different uh, 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 layers. So in the, in the cellar, you, you find the wine. And there is something interesting also in this reverse process between, the, um, between climate and, um, and function, because we don't know if it is the wine that have invented the, the cellar, or if it is the cellar that has invited, uh, invented the, um, the wine. And when you go higher in the space, in the, in the house, when you go to the attic, so you could start to dry, to be in more drier area, and so you have the, uh, the most dry uh, food conservation um, in, the, um, in the cellar, in the, in the attic. So we could do a map of this organization, because the house is not only uh, is not only the use, it's also the conservation of the thing. And uh, so it's, here it's uh, temperature and relative humidity. Uh, so it means that the cellar is here, bathroom will be here, kitchen is here, uh, living room is more here, computer will be here, and the uh, ham will be here. And so you could organize things according to this uh, different gradation of, uh, of moisture and, um, and humidity in the space. And, uh, and, and so you could have this kind of between the low relative humidity to the high relative humidity, you could see uh, where the, the, the uh, cured ham will be nuts, will be there. And when it's become more humid, so you could keep the, um, the apple in the more uh, humid area. And so now if you analyze what's happened during the modernity, uh, First, it was like this, so you have the dry area and the humid area, and there is the invention of the fridge. Uh, of the, um, that, the, so it means the cellar go into the fridge and the attic go into a pantry or into a cupboard, and it becomes objects that come into, uh, into the space. And uh, today, uh, because uh, we're following this double flow Heat renewal system with when you introduce the new air somewhere and it go from the dry area to the humid area, so it, it, there is a travel. Uh, so it means that the uh, the house is no more uh, an homogene, uh, homogeneous uh, middle dry or middle humid space. It's become again there is a new stratification between humid area and dry area. So it means that 
first, if it was before it was a vertical um, uh, stratification, maybe now we could change, reverse it into an horizontal one, so we accept the flat horizontal organization of the modernity. We introduce the, the difference between dry area and humid area inside the plan. We stretch it in, into the plan according to the source of new air and the exhaust air that will be air here. And so it creates a plan of uh, a contemporary uh, apartment where you could find the low, low relative humidity here, the middle relative humidity and the high relative. So you have the bathtub here with the apple and you have your computer here and the ham here and the bed. So it will be like I, I say here, it's because you produce only 40 grams of vapor during one hour and here you produce a lot of vapor uh, by taking a shower. And so it, it's, there is this new organization <coughs> of the house uh, following the... So here, the, the idea is really to, to, to start from all these new techniques and all these new uh, exigence, uh, new, new uh, will of... Um, uh, sustainability and to see what kind of space and what kind of uh, of, uh, of climate and uh, architecture it could create. And so we have this. It was a competition, uh, international competition in uh, in uh, last year, and we won in uh, in October. And uh, so it's like uh, it's 70 hectares, so it's like three times uh, the Parc de la Villette in France. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the old airport of Taichung. And um, so we, we have uh, finished the planning services and the pre preliminary design. We just start now the detailed design and the construction will start in, um, will start in, uh, in January next year, in, in January 2013. And uh, so it's in Chinese and with an English subtitle. And so you will see exactly that all the idea uh, about heat and humidity and there is another layer of, of pollution here are reintroduced to design the space. And, um, and, um, and, and also there is this idea that form and function follow climate and function follow climate according to the different uh, uh, zone. Wayne 我们计划的目的是想要挽回一下气温、湿度和空气污染达成创造一个新的住起来比较舒服惬意的气候环境我们的公园提出在夏天能把纬度稍微高一点的湖里的舒适气温带来台中对于湿度我们的公园提出能够延伸十一月舒适的干燥气候到中年的其他月份空气污染我们要把瑞水相近的纯净空气带到台中市都心来在公园散步的人以某些角度来看就像及时在另一个纬度旅行一样在另一个季节在另一个气候较好的纬度里<咳> 
为了减低高温、湿度和空气污染，我们在公园中会装设气候侦测机。每一个侦测机会改善高温、湿度和空气污染。如果百分之九十的侦测机是一个有说有去除污染功能的树，那就是有百分之十的设施建造，比如说像是喷泉、喷水池、喷雾机。空气除湿机，或者是可去除蚊子的超声波播放喇叭。在机油的地图上，我们画出了三张气象图，每张皆有特别的大气数值，让我们可以选择装置这些不同气候侦测机在公园里的位置。第一个是关于温度的地图，公园本身不同的地点，也自然的有着不同的温度。我们将在受东北风吹拂。而比较凉爽的地方，加重的种植能降低气温的气候侦测机。相反的，在比较不受东北风影响的地方，我们就种植少些，因此这些地方比较热。第二张是关于空气中水汽的地图。我们新创造的公园的地形，决定了这个地方的水流向，也因此决定了空气中的水汽。然后，公园中最低洼处，正常来讲是存水最多之处。地缘的关系，因此空气中也聚集最多的水汽。在这些地方，湿度最大。相反的，在最高的地方，在我们创造的少山地点上，空气将会比较干燥，也比较舒服。我们将利用这既有的优点，更加强的加装很多有除湿功能的气候侦测机。为了制定第三张关于空气污染的地图，我们自然而然的从公园四周的公路画起。只要越远离公路，我们就越可以感觉到空气污染的减少。在远离道路的地方，我们加强了大量装置可以去污染的侦测机。所以，气候侦测机就是我们这风景越不利的重要元素。它们建构了无数质量不等的微小气候，将自然的主导了公园里节目的分布，比如说公共建筑、娱乐区、散步路径的排列或游戏广场的位置。根据我们所绘制的气象地图，仔细的画出界限来。在公园中气候比较不舒服的地点，我们建议在这里制作有建筑物的节目，像是博物馆、铁塔、停车场等等。相反的，娱乐空间将是在我们所制造的小气候中最舒服的地方。以此类推，我们将安排儿童游戏区在空气污染最不严重的区域，以保障孩子们的健康。而运动区，我们将设置在较干燥的地方，就不会因为空气太过潮湿而妨碍了身体正常的排汗。根据公园里不同质量的气候环境而安排，所以此路径将会穿越起公园内所有比较干燥的区域，成为舒服的慢跑小道。另一条路径将会穿越起公园内比较不受污染的区域，我们要建造一条亲子之路。在这条路上，我们可以放心的和孩子们散步。每一条路径将会带给人们不同的感官经验。为了让公园的游客感觉空气变得凉爽，我们建议有三十来种气候侦测机。比如说，在空气中散播着微小水滴的喷雾器，可以让四周顿时清凉。把家里室内的休闲材质应用在室外的长椅上，如此突兀的，在大白天里可让人感受到如夜晚回家的清爽时刻。一种水泥材质做成的支架，里头有着经过地下自然冷却的水通过的水管，表面会因此保持冰凉，让人消暑
，广州叶片硕大的树会有很多的树影，让人躲太阳。一种把四周炎热的空气吸起来，存到很深的地底之下，再排放出来的侦测机，能创造一块清凉舒爽的区域。稍微远一点，我们可以看到一床用泥土搭成的小屋，它也具有吸收空气中水汽的功能，汇集了公园里的水流而形成小湖，造成了这个地点湿度比较大，比较不舒服。但我们可以因此在这里规划喷水游乐区，汇集了公园里的水流而形成小湖，造成了这个地点湿度比较大，比较不舒服。但我们可以因此在这里规划喷水游戏区。种在这里的树会吸收空气里的湿气，篮球场地板的材质将会吸收高温和湿气，在这里做运动变得比较舒服。首先是城市的噪音，我们发射与它相反的音波，将噪音抚平。还原原本的宁静。接着，我们要用不同的方式来打击和吸收空气的污染。光触媒的运用，它能吸收和分解空气里有毒的分子，还有某些具有吸收空气中有毒物质特性的植物。最后是超声波的播放喇叭，可以驱赶蚊子，让儿童能够再回到公园来玩耍。我们的计划在今天是一个基本且必要的计划，它带来养生并维护大城市市民的健康。我们真正想要送给台中市市民的是感官的经验，是一个让人觉得舒服的广大户外空间。在那里，我们可以避开酷暑和大雨，度过美好时光。在远离噪音和污染之际，放轻松身心，跟孩子们在露天空间里嬉戏游玩。
so very often there is this idea that uh, um, we have some project where we want to introduce different color, but the color will be for, uh, will be according to if we want to to uh, transform the light into heat or to reject it. And I, I heard when it was uh, the heat wave in London, they they start they, they think that they, they could paint the the bus. Uh, the red bus into white, the, the, the roof of the bus in white to uh, reduce the temperature inside the, the bus. Uh, but it was not so efficient. But this is a. Um, the, so uh, uh, the, the, the white, I think, is linked with this. Uh, first, it comes from the melatonin and from this, uh, um, this uh, idea that we don't want to transform the light into it. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, other questions? Okay, who are you? Fascinating to um, hear you speak about the work again. I've been interested in it for a long time. And I'm still fascinated by this way that you managed to combine almost conceptual art and now somehow masterclass. That on the one hand, you take a kind of functionality or a line of function. <coughs> So that in some of the work, it's almost um, it's more like conceptual art and installation. But then also now, in more recent projects, I think, we're starting to use that line of thinking so that it somehow also fits the logic of master planning and zoning. So really, it's a question for me about which kind of, whether, you, whether you like to work in this double way, which I think is really fascinating. Or whether you see yourself in the future, you kind of end with the most recent project. Whether you see the, the potential for work moving into something like um, master planning, learning, that kind of thing. For me, the, um, yes, I was very often invited in, 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 in museum or art space to do some project. And, and uh, we could adjust, there is something in our form, the American magazine, this month about art and architecture. There is a discussion with some even though and uh, some and some people that talk about the relation between art and architecture. And I'm part of this uh, discussion. And for me, the, the link was, all, uh, was to, to do something in art space, but all the way to rethink about the language of architecture. It was a kind of critical moment to think, to, 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 yes, to be critical with the language and to say, okay, we destroy the language in small elements, in small parts, and we start to rethink a new language with this. And uh, I think the art space was a place to do it. And, uh, and this is a place to do, to rethink about the language of architecture. So, um, so I, I think in a certain way, it, it was the reason why I, I I did a lot of uh, exhibition like this, and, uh, uh, and I'm still invited, but, uh, for example, uh, two, two invitations, but, uh, or some invitations, in, uh, but I have some, uh, it's not so easy today because we are, we are doing a lot of things, and, uh, and so it was, but uh, the, the jump from this scale, small scale, to more master plan scale or uh, urban scale, I think, uh, um, I think, yes, it's quite, for the park, it was quite uh, easy to combine, to take all this idea and to do this master plan according to, to this, uh, uh, because I think the question of the, the park was uh, completely unique. Uh, when, I, when I started to do the, this park, I, I was reading uh, again old stem for Central Park, the landscape designer, and also Al Fong in Paris uh, with Osman. And uh, when you read uh, the, the book of them, the memory of them, they explain that everything is linked to climate. Farm. For example, Onstan is happy with Central Park in this memory because the health of the New Yorker are better since three years since the construction of. Uh, so the, the health uh, uh, issue of the park was the most important issue for him when he designed Central Park. And uh, when you read uh, uh, Alphonse, uh, also, in, uh, after the, in the introduction already, you speak about the, the trees, a tree, in the, like in the boulevard, there is some trees in Paris, uh, 
he, he speak about the tree, not like a romantic idea or to bring nature into the city, but it was just a, a, a device to create shadow uh, for the horse and for the people, because if you have no trees, it will be too warm in the boulevard uh, with a, a stone. And, uh, and so you know, trees is a machine to create a cold area. And, and after you could think that every tools, uh, every um, element of the park, like a kiosk or like a grotto or like a fontaine, are the climatic devices. Like a fontaine creates a more colder area near the fontaine. And, uh, so, uh, so uh, it's why we the, the idea to work with climate inside the park. I think it was completely a, a natural idea. And today I'm really also interested into a more uh, global uh, urban scale. I, I write a text for uh, thermodynamic urbanism, urban planning. Uh, so it's an idea to rethink about uh, uh, how to organize the globalization, but more according to thermodynamic. And, uh, uh, and there is some very interesting examples like uh, the rubric relocation of uh, Facebook data farm from California to, to uh, Ludea in the north of uh, Sweden, where it's more cold because they could economize the uh, air conditioning and electricity. And, uh, and also a small village in Switzerland uh, become a millionaire today because they, they, they sell the, the, the water for the dam, for the barrage, for the dam to produce electricity. And uh, so it was a very poor, small village of uh, 100 people in the mountain, and without ski and nothing. And now they are milliardaires. And, uh, uh, and uh, so it changed the reality link uh, to energy, to climate, co could move. Uh, and in the history of, uh, of the city, you could see that the maybe Paris was really important uh, after the Renaissance. It was linked to the... To the um, uh, forget the... To the belief, uh, the, the seed, uh, the um, what you mean, it's like the corn, like a, the kind of uh, it, it was an area where you could uh, have a good uh, agriculture linked to this corn, and uh, and so it, it, it was very efficient, and so uh, and it was an invention, a, a kind of a selective, a kind of genetical selection of one corn that was was bad and linked to the uh, machine. Uh, and that permit to these people to, produce, to increase the quantity of uh, food uh, from, uh, and so for new economical and historians they say that maybe the reason why China because it was more um, in advance China uh, during the Middle Age and, uh, and Europe was less so it was linked uh, between the two uh, rice and, uh, uh, and wheat, wheat, not, not wheat. Uh, and uh, we become very uh, easy to produce and why stay the same so it was why at the moment the, the Europe became very uh, powerful and uh, so this is it uh, there is some interesting idea for, for the uh, it's linked to Jared Diamond also book like uh, um, uh, 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 fate and uh, uh, collapse and, uh, of and, things like this. and I think it could be really interesting for us uh, the urban design uh, links to this thing. I think Lulia is next. And there's one over there, I think. Lulia? I enjoyed your talk very much. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, to ask uh, whether I enjoyed the particular two projects, both the Biennale Uh, existing mm -hmm. thing. 
and wall, but you could also build a window inside the wall. And so, it, so I think you could have the same freedom with these things. And uh, so it's uh, so it's why, for example, the function, the way to use oh, it's what uh, it's something a little more uh, more uh, ir um, ir irrational. But I like also that, for example, when you have this different the, in the apartment where you have the different uh, sofa, different high. No, the use, uh, because I received some parties, some emails of the party of the young doctor with a lot of people inside the flat. You know, people are using this space in a very strange way, you know. Uh, and uh, so it it's also creates some new behaviors or new way of living. So uh, I like this idea that you, you produce a kind of uh, climate, like a, a background, and after there is something else that could happen. And, uh, and 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 um, so so it's why I, I think it's um, it's also a process to invent some new uh, new form and new uh, new organization of space. And after uh, link to the um, for the for, the, for this uh, apartment where we we have this uh, radiator and everything inside. So we have a thermostat inside that control kind of. It's like a normal thermostat in a normal house. You, so when it becomes dry, it's blocked. And, uh, so it creates, there is some uh, wave of heat inside. So it's, uh, uh, so it's yes, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, work well. Yes. And, uh, and I think the young doctor is very happy. I was wondering if you have these units. You, have, you mentioned that if we go with a the thermostat. Yes, we with the thermostat. No, I but we need to, to go with a thermal camera and take photo inside. <coughs> so yeah, I, I, I will do it. <laughs> so, I and thanks for the lecture. And you began to answer my question before I asked it. I was going to ask about um, your clients in the apartments, whether they were living in them. Living in and if they are, do they still speak to you? Yeah, 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 they, they have this doctor and it has parties and fun. Because they live in there and it's comfortable. Yes, yes. Does the doctor live in the flat yes. and it's comfortable? Yes. So it's like, yeah, I, yes, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's comfortable. But for me, you know, it's this idea of comfort. When you read the history of architecture, then you, we have some very banal idea in the mind. From, because I discovered, for example, the. the the yeah, idea to have different space with a living room, bathroom, a uh, uh, bedroom. This idea comes from the 19th century with the invention of the corridor, uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the creation of the bourgeoisie. And uh, but before, uh, before the 19th century, uh, uh, this idea to have space with different rooms was not like this for example. We you know that the, the Louvre, the palace of the Louvre in Paris, uh, a lot of projects like this, you know, you could see a room and they are exactly the same and you don't know if one is a kitchen and another is a living room. And so, uh, and we know this story that uh, um, uh, it was Bernini, the architect, and uh, uh, no, Bernini was the architect of the competition, but he lose the competition for the group. But the Colbert, the prime minister, asked to Bernini where the king will uh, sleep. And Bernadette said to him that it was not a question of architecture, it was a question of management. Uh, you, you could sleep where you want. Uh, you know, there is not a room or a space where... And of course it could change, maybe you could sleep there during the spring and go there during the winter, or go there... Or, so, and, and of course the old house, also the country house, was uh, the, the, the organization with the climate was completely different. For example, the, the near the fire, it was... a uh, the, the, the kitchen, but it was also the living room, and it was also the sleeping room for the old person there at the same place. So it was a kind of irradiation of of, uh, of things, and, and 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 after you could see that um, that all the social organization of the house and the way of living and the idea of comfort is, is something completely a creation, uh, uh, maybe of the 20th century, uh, into a fridge and to. A, a radiator or something, and we forget all these things, and, and, and so it's why I'm not afraid to to produce something that maybe uh, is completely different and uh, could 
invent some new social uh, uh, function. There are things with loft living, isn't it? It's an image of Diva, the famous one Diva at the back and the loft. It's, it's, it's not that extreme, really, in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you about some the John Tim Singh references. That, you know, there's not many architects designing like you, I'm sure you're actually right. But looking at the lecture, it just shows the mostly links with the invisible architecture and the largely the pilots of Dave Green of Arthur uh, there seems to be, a, there is an intellectual connection somewhere. I just wonder if you want to say something about, you know, you know who influenced you, what you read, you know, where does this yeah. come from? No, I must say that when I start, I, uh, you know, I, I didn't know a lot. Uh, uh, after I discover, uh, of course, uh, for example, Peter Stoddard, the philosophy is really, really important. <coughs> it's uh, something that uh, I need to Say, for example, that, uh, that the most important thing today, uh, in the 20th century, was to design the atmosphere. And I think it's a, uh, it starts with the gas in the, in the first world war. And, uh, uh, and so I think all this idea uh, is, is something of uh, a philosophical background. And also I'm interested in Jared Diamond and some of this uh, Californian uh, historian. Uh, I think the book are very interesting. And also a, a, an economist uh, in France called Daniel Cohen, and he writes very interesting book. Uh, it's a little in the line of uh, Jared Diamond, where he reverse, he explain different phenomena that uh, you know uh, that you think that it is a, you know the real, uh, for example there is this idea of why um, uh, why the um, it's, a, it's, a, it's also a link to your question is. For example, he said that some people think that uh, before the analyze of, uh, of the history was very linked to social and cultural approach. And for example, he said that uh, we think that when uh, it was a small uh, village in, the, in Australia, uh, and the, it was an uh, anthropologue, uh, anthropology, uh, scientific that explored some uh, old yes, yeah. and they, they they were in a small village and they say that um, when there is a big party, they kill a cow and they eat the cow and it's a big social... And so they think that it is because there is a religious uh, reason and uh, so to, to, uh, to celebrate these uh, religious uh, things, they, 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 they kill the cow and they eat all the village together. <coughs> but there is some, another part of the, of the, of the science that they know that this is exactly the opposite because they kill the cow and they have no matter to keep the food because they have no salt, they have no smoke, they have no fridge and so after a few uh, weeks, after a few days, uh, the, the meat uh, will be uh, rotten and so, so it means it's why they invite everybody because they need, everybody needs to need, need the, uh, because, and so the party is not the reason to kill the cow because they keep the code that create uh, the party. So, and I think it, uh, it's why I think maybe if we change the, the say, okay, we start with the climate, maybe it, will, it could create some new uh, social behavior that will be consequence of uh, something else. So I'm interested in this kind of thing. Um, and link to architecture, of course, uh, 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 but it's, it's, uh, uh, I, um, I wish, for example, I, I know that Richard de Trau also write uh, things about climate, and, uh, but I didn't read. Really, I received a book, but, uh, but uh, I think there is a lot of things about, uh, about uh, this approach. And also, I met uh, uh, I met a, a woman that wrote uh, 20 years ago a book called uh, "The Light Rule of, uh, of Climate." Um, Lisa, Lisa. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And uh, so we, we did uh, at the Baskin School of, of, of Design in New York. We, we did a lecture together, and, and I think the book is a very, really good and very interesting. And uh, it was not so maybe not so successful at this time, but like, so it was more. more but uh, I think it's a really interesting book, and uh, and uh, and of course. Um, uh, if plan, for example, the air architecture, if plan, or something. Maybe so, we just have two more questions, I think. Elizabeth, and then someone at the back. I'm sure you've already talked about it, but when I look at the domestics of what is it?
used to including your research how you might look at the domestic run back into the city and how you tell that sort of like, parasitic as a rough way to describe what you're doing, but parasitic is the idea of how one, one venture, the city, the industry, offices, Thank you. And thanks for being here.